Hi, I'm AJ, sitting right over here, right next to my friend Sarah. You may recall that I have an insane immunology teacher. And in this scene, I want to tell you about how she brilliantly taught me how to memorize the immunoglobulins. Now, let me begin by telling you a bit about what Sarah had told me about my teacher. And I'm going to be honest with you, at first, I didn't believe it. Sarah told me that my teacher has this mystical bee. My teacher is somehow able to evoke certain forces to activate this bee. She mumbles some sort of magical spell or something, and this activates the bee. At the end of this scene, you'll recognize that this B is going to represent the B cell. Anyway, once the B is activated, it's able to secrete various things. It can secrete the golden IgG, the magenta IgM, the IgA guy who's always sitting on the hay, and the Ig eel for IgE. So again, all of this is part of the story that I thought Sarah was making up. And of course, I didn't believe it. Until one day, when I heard a noise in class. What was that noise? I asked her. And it seemed as though there were various creatures coming to attack our school. Sarah, I said, we have to get out of here. But Sarah, as usual, said in her calm voice, Don't worry, AJ. We'll be okay. Teacher will protect us. And as I was soon about to see, Sarah was correct. Our teacher once again summoned the bee. She recited her magical spell and activated the bee. The bee then, of course, did its thing and started to release the immunoglobulins that we mentioned before. Let me describe to you what each of these immunoglobulins did. And as the story unfolds, I'm going to explain to you what the various elements represent. Okay, so it all begins with IgM. And that's represented by this magenta IgM character over here. Now the reason why we're beginning with this one is because IgM is the first immunoglobulin that a B cell can produce. And the truth is, a B cell expresses IgM even before being activated. That is, when it's still a mature naive B cell. It soon begins expressing IgD as well. But since IgD is not so important, since it has an unclear function, we're not going to discuss it too much. Anyway, back to our story about IgM, the magenta IgM. IgM, because of its multimeric structure, is extremely important in the early response to antigens. On the surface of a B cell, it's a monomer, but it's secreted as a pentamer. And if we take a look, we can see that it's held together tightly by this J chain over here. IgM is extremely important in the early response to antigen. And that's because it has five times the capacity to bind antigenic epitopes. As you may recall, IgM has the highest avidity. It has the highest number of antigen binding sites. Because of its design, IgM is so effective at trapping antigen. Which is why in this scene over here, the magenta IgM is trapping the dragon! To remind us of the function of IgM in the early response. Actually, because of its design, IgM is most effective at activating complement. Perhaps this lady over here, the magenta IgM character, likes giving people compliments. We'll see soon that there's another character in this scene who also likes giving compliments. Again, this just reminds us that IgM is effective at activating complement. And one more thing that I want to mention is that this IgM character likes to hang out in cold environments, which just reminds us that IgM is associated with cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia. All right, now let's talk about IgG. So IgG is represented by this golden immunoglobulin character over here. Gold for G. IgG. As we see over here, he's breaking through this placenta over here before he attacks the dragon. This reminds us that IgG is the only isotype that can cross the placenta. This is why IgG is important for providing the infant with passive immunity, which starts to wane after the baby is born. So IgG is the main antibody in the secondary response to an antigen. That's why we're talking about it right after we spoke about IgM, which is important for the primary response. And we see over here that he's neutralizing the dragon, which reminds us that IgG neutralizes bacterial toxins and viruses. Now, I didn't mention this before, but the fact that he was going up, he was going up through the roof, was to remind us of up, or opsin, opsinization, as IgG opsinizes bacteria. This enhances phagocytosis. And this fire, which he trails behind, just reminds us that IgG is associated with warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia. 
And the reason why we have various IgG guys over here is just to remind us that IgG is the most abundant isotype in the serum. And finally, IgG, just like IgM, fixes complement, which is why this guy over here perhaps also likes giving people compliments. Maybe he's even giving a compliment to the dragon as the dragon dies. He's saying, You are a wonderful dragon. Alright, let's move on now to IgA. So IgA is another isotype that can be produced following class switching. Now IgA is represented by this guy over here who's always sitting on hay. Hay for A. IgA. As we take a look at this structure over here, IgA exists as a dimer, held together by a J-chain, similar to that produced by IgM. Let's talk about the characteristics of IgA. As we see from this guy's shirt over here, he protects mucosal surfaces. And, as pathogens infect the mucosa, they induce IgA production by the secretion of various cytokines. So this is the job of IgA, to protect mucosal surfaces. Now, the monster attacking this part of the school over here was Giardia, Giardia lamblia. And that's because IgA classically presents mucosa against Giardia, Giardia lamblia. This is why patients with IgA deficiency have an increased risk for Giardia infection. Another thing that we see over here is that this IgA guy over here on the hay is crying. This helps him guard the school. I don't know how. I don't know why, but crying helps him protect the school. And this reminds us that IgA is released into secretions such as tears and saliva. Actually, the tears are trickling down onto his breast, which reminds us that IgA is also found in breast milk. A final word that I'm going to mention about IgA is that IgA picks up a secretory component from epithelial cells. This helps IgA survive in the lumen. Alright, then we get up to the next pathogen over here. This is the worm. The helmet worm. Helmet worm helps us remember the helminth worms. And who is responsible for protecting against helmet worms? Or helminth worms? IgE. And IgE is represented by this eel over here. Eel for E. IgE. As we see over here, this eel is activating the eyes of this pathogen over here. Eyes reminds us of eosinophils, as IgA contributes to the immunity against parasites by activating eosinophils. And that's why this worm over here is exploding! Again, which reminds us that IgE activates eosinophils to fight against helminth worms. Now, this eel over here likes to hang around this boat over here with the mast. Mast reminds us of mast cells, as IgE also binds mast cells. And the picture of the basophil over here reminds us of basophils, as IgE also binds basophils. Alright, so these antibodies were successful at protecting Sarah and I and the school. Now the punchline of the story is that my teacher actually was the one who summoned up these various monsters to attack our school. And she did this in order to teach us about the immunoglobulins. And although this is quite an insane way of teaching, it actually really helped me. Let's quickly review what I learned today. We began by talking about IgM, and that's because B cells first express IgM, and then IgD. So IgM is produced in the immediate response to antigen. As a pentamer, it's really good at fixing complement, and it's associated with a cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia. IgG is the main antibody in the secondary response to antigen. It's the most abundant isotype in the serum. IgG fixes complement, opsonizes bacteria, and neutralizes pathogens. It's the only isotype that can cross the placenta, and it's associated with warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia. IgA, which is secreted as a dimer, protects against mucosal infections such as Giardia, and IgE activates eosinophils to fight against helminth worms and binds mast cells and basophils. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this scene, and I hope you learned a lot about the immunoglobulins. Take care.